Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Nady, and today we're going over the latest best and worst of Tay Tay. As you beautiful people know, this is about the products, not the people behind them. Any tiff you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. Once again, my lips are as dry as a mongoose's anus. <sighs> oh, my little squirrel cakes, how you doing today? I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having a great day so far. I myself am doing wonderful, a little bit on the sleepy side, but I blame it on the weather. It is so gloomy and dreary out. I love it. But today, I am sans makeup. I'm not gonna try anything because I'm just wanting to give my skin a little bit of a break. I just did a Timu makeup review. I don't know if you've seen that, but definitely go check it out. I did break out a little bit. Just around here, it looks like I got bit by a spider. Nothing too serious. Serious. Nothing's falling off, but I'm just gonna take a little break from makeup for a minute and instead we're gonna talk about the shit that I spent an ass ton on. Yes, I got my credit card statement today and whoo, daddy. No, I'm kind of kidding because a lot of stuff that we reviewed I did send back because it just didn't match me like I want to get my actual shade. We'll use pictures if I don't have it. But I also really haven't tried makeup for months and I've just been getting back into it. So this is kind of like a recap of the things that I love, the things that I don't love, with a few things that I didn't try on camera sprinkled in. So let's just do dive in, shall we? Hopefully I don't fall asleep by the end of this. The first item we're gonna talk about is actually a sample. We recently did a full face of C4 Ha samples, and this was one of my favorite things to come from that video. That is the Urban Decay All Nighter, which, relatable girl. This shit does a fabulous job at making your face waterproof, which I know might not be something that everyone is interested in, but some people just get a lot of liquid on their face, especially if you live where I do and it's always raining. What did you think I was talking about? Anyways, I walked through the rain yesterday and had my makeup set with this. Bitch, I look perfect. When I have this on, you could take me swimming. It's hard for me to find a good ass setting spray that doesn't break down my makeup or make me look really shiny and greasy. And this seems to do the trick. So I'm going to keep using it and we'll probably end up buying the real deal or the big deal. But this works fine for now. After all, bigger isn't always better. Next up, we have a product that I have mentioned a hundred different times, but it's still in my Yas category. A lot of times products get demoted, but no bitch, I still love this shit out of this. That is the Patrick Tom Major Sculpt foundation. Oh my gosh. It is definitely a chunk out of the bank account, but it is so fucking worth it. I've had this for so damn long and I use it pretty frequently, but it only has a little bit of a bite taken out of it. You can go in super minimally with it. You can actually build it up to be a full coverage foundation and the powder that it comes with is beautiful. It's just a marvelous product, whether you're a professional or you're an average Joe Schmo like myself. It's something that I will probably continue investing in, even though I have my Maybelline fit me, this just sits a little bit differently, both in the pockets and on the face. Moving on down the list, we have Sofia Vergara's makeup line, Toddy, which this was hella gorgeous. We recently did a review on it as well, and I love the way these little bastards looked on my face. It was just so damn pretty. However, it did kind of want to slide off. There's a bug. I just saw it flying. Oh, and there's hair too. My goodness, I live in a cesspool. Anyways, I got the shade 2C in both the liquid and the compact. And they just weren't quite my color. So I'm actually going to be sending these back because these weren't cheap. I think one was like 40 and the other was 50 bucks. So these are definitely high end, but also you don't have to use very much. Like this stuff will last you a lifetime. Well, not that. It'll at least last you probably more than a month. It has great SPF in it, like 50 plus, which is unheard of with makeup. It does kind of create flashback and a white hue so there is that but 50 plus SPF like what the fuck do you expect at least it's not clown makeup the only complaint that I've heard about this is that if you do have like any kind of oil to your skin this will probably rub down rub off rub away these hoes ain't gonna stay in your face if you're greasy or oily so if you prep first I feel like you would have much more of a fighting chance but they worked well for my skin I'm definitely very curious about this brand next up we have a product that I actually returned because it did not match me that is the Natasha Natasha Denono High Glam Concealer. I loved this stuff so damn much. I've worn it multiple times, but every time I go out, it just looks so damn yellow on me. But formula-wise, it was so smooth. Was it crease-proof? Fuck to the no. But it performed great. It lasted all damn day. It just looked so beautiful and flawless and smooth and airbrushed underneath my eyes. And you had to go in so minimally. And it packed a punch too. Like you could use it as an actual squeeze squee rather than just an under eye brightener. It was so beautiful. 
beautiful. Not every Natasha Denono product is a win for me, but that certainly was the shiz. Kind of expensive, though, I will say. And last up in our Yas category, we have the Aldi's Urban Decay Palette Dupe, which I do still have, but it is buried in my makeup drawer. And I'm not about to fish that shit out. But I think this palette was around five or six dollars, absolutely under ten, probably closer to six. There's that bug again. Ah, shoo fly, you little fucker. Nobody loves you. I'm just kidding. We all love you. Just trying to get your little 15 minutes. You fly, little bitch. Oh, now he disappeared. The palette's pigmentation wasn't quite on par with the Urban Decay. I had to spend like five extra minutes total on my eye look, but the eye looks ended up looking the exact same. So it's kind of up to you if you want to spend like $50 on a palette and save five minutes a day, or if you want to spend five and spend a little extra time on your makeup. But that palette is so damn beautiful. They have multiple variations. The shimmers are to die for. And for the price, like shit, you can't beat it. I love all these. Cheese selection is killer. Next, we are moving on to our meh category. We're starting off with our Rare Boutete Under Eye Brightener. This, I actually thought was a concealer. So I was like packing it underneath my eyes, wondering why it wasn't covering anything. But I did notice that it was hella bright. Well, two months into using this, I finally went on Sephora and realized this is a brightener. As a brightener, I do like it. It doesn't really look like I'm wearing makeup, but right under here, it does kind of accentuate my fine lines. But you have to be closer than I allow anyone to be to actually see it. I don't mind it. What I absolutely hate, though, is the applicator. It is so fucking annoying. It's just a metal tip, and you can't even see it. But it does look cute and pretty, but it is so fucking inconsistent when I apply product because one eye, I could apply a little drop, and then the other side, it actually looks like a concealer. But the actual product itself, I do enjoy. And I might repurchase this, but apply it a little bit differently. Maybe put it on my fingers and then go in. Just so she's more even. But is it my favorite thing? No. But is it workable? Yes. My next matte product, actually, I feel like should be in my Yas category. That is the YSL All Hours Foundation. We tried this in my little Sephora sample review. And I don't know that anything has ever looked quite as divine on my skin as this. But I went to the Sephora reviews and a lot of people are saying they switched the formula recently. And it feels and looks very cheap on their skin, which this is a $60 foundation. That is not something that should look cheap on your skin. For that price, you should just be applying gold foil to your face. Fuck. So though I thought this looked absolutely stunning on my face, I don't know if I got the reformulated version or the old one. So for that reason, we are in the meh category because inconsistency is not key. So yeah, I don't know how to feel about that, but this product, it looked so beautiful on my skin. It was full ass coverage because I applied way too fucking much, but even though I applied way too much, it still looked great. It didn't look cakey. I just looked flawless. So I liked it, but did I think it was worth $60? Mm, I might still get it. What I'm not quite in love with, but do still somewhat enjoy though, is the Maybelline Superstay. We just tried this and I do really like the way it looks. However, it also looks like I'm wearing makeup. For some reason, it doesn't sit as nicely on my skin as other products. And I really want to like it because even though I think this was like 17 or $18, you only need a tiny bit. I'm talking like one or two drops. I don't exactly have my correct color. So I ended up mixing two of them yet yesterday, just two drops of each on a brush. And that was like full coverage for me. My skin did not look good. But then when I apply one or two drops, it doesn't really do anything. So I'm still going to play around with her and try to find some middle ground with it. This does say it's 24 hours, which I do have to disagree with that. Maybe if you're using this as mortician's makeup, then it would last 24 hours. But if you are a human that actually does stuff and moves, this isn't 24, maybe like 12, which that's pretty damn good too. I do really like though that this is kind of skincare heavy. Like it's just a skin tint and it says it has a ton of vitamin C in it, but this also smells like alcohol. So like pick your poison here. You cannot take this anywhere near a grill, you will explode. So like dry skin, vitamin C. Mm. Next in our meh category is the Neutrogena Hydrating Setting Spray. This bitch is almost empty. Like I have used the actual ass out of it. And at first I really, really liked this because I've been using setting sprays that just aren't for me. And so when I found something new, I was like, oh, this is the bee's knees. The cat's meow, the ticklish titties. It was just the shiz. But I found that it kind of breaks down my makeup. I don't know if it's the hydration or what, but it does less setting and more breaking. I do see that this has castor oil in it, which I mean, that is a very heavy oil and could probably be the reason why my makeup comes off. Like drag queens use that and coconut oil to remove their face. Will I be repurchasing? Probably not. Moving on down the line, you might actually be a little bit surprised with this product. That is the Lancome. What is this? It's what I always use and have used for ages. However, for some reason lately, as in like the last year, this has creased like crazy on me and I cannot figure it out. I've used this on models at photo shoots. Like it is so fucking pretty, but 
fuck? It looks like absolute garbage on me lately. And it's so expensive too. I don't know if anybody else has that problem. Maybe I'm setting it incorrectly. You know what? Maybe it says setting spray. <gasps> but just the fact that this has been so finicky lately, I have to bump it down to the matte category. Maybe we'll go back up once I figure it out. But so far, she's a little bit on my shit list. But other than the creasiness, looks wise, it is tip of the top, cream of the crop. So if you know any good tips to make that not crease, please let a bitch know. Next, we have the Anastasia Beverly Hills. What was that palette? Cosmos? I think that's what she was called. We reviewed it on here and it actually was very, very good quality, like typical Anastasia products. But there was nothing great in it. Like if you have two or three other Anastasia palettes, you don't need this. And the one shadow that was actually gorgeous came broken. I don't think it was Anastasia's fault. It was Alta's, but really, come the hell on. Like they just shipped it in a flimsy ass envelope, no padding or anything. And so the blue was just exploded. And they were nice enough to send me a replacement, but unfortunately that was exploded too. Those are what, like $50 palettes. So they sent me $100 worth and then they ended up refunding me because both were broken. Granted, Alta probably buys those for like $5 a palette. So it probably was cheaper for me to just get a refund rather than them paying to ship it back. But still, the color story, it wasn't that great. Some of the shimmers were unique and very pretty. Big old pile of meh. And lastly, we have the Patrick Star One Size Pink Powder, which that was pretty. But for $32, I feel like I could get a little bit better quality with like Laura Mercier, but it could be a good-ish dupe. I think it was maybe 10 bucks cheaper than the Laura and it was beautifully finely milled. But even though I set it on my desk to try and use as I film, I still reached for my Florisys powder. That will probably forever always be my true love. Even over my Laura Mercier, though I am a Laura Mercier ho. I think the Florisys is just a little bit more than the Patrick Star, but for the quality, I would rather pay a little bit more. The one size certainly wasn't bad or anything. It did look beautiful on my skin, but I think I'm looking at this more on the price side. You could probably get the same product for a lot less or pay the same and get better quality. But it certainly wasn't bad. It just wasn't great either. So it's meh. And now we are on to our final category of the day, the hell knows. Probably my favorite category, even though we are positive queen. Everyone loves to talk a little bit of smack about shit. And we're gonna start with a product that I cannot find. I'm pretty sure I still have it. I just have too many boxes of shit. But tip top at this list is the Fenty Lip Stain and Cheek Stick. Talk about some bullshit. It's not like anybody forced us to buy these products, so don't get me wrong. I'm not held at gunpoint on the Sephora checkout or anything. But some of these products are kind of on the high-ish side price-wise, and they do not perform. Okay, so let's talk about that Fenty Cheek Stick first. It was that clear little fucker, and you literally only got like that much product in it. Just a little tiny nipple-shaped stick. And I literally have seen nipples bigger than this product. Let me find how much that shit was. The lip stain is 27, fine, what the hell ever, but then the matchstick color adaptive cheek and lipstick is $32. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to that video and watch me unscrew the micro penis that lied inside. $32 for a product that has been around for 50 or 60 years, and you can get it from like five below or the dollar store. It just changes color and turns a little bit more pink, but I didn't know that during checkout. I thought it was an actual like cream-based product, and no, it was not. It did look beautiful on the skin, but not $32. And then once you put it on your lips, it tasted so bad. It was like sucking a nickel and licking a dollar. Just kind of chemically and metally. Not pleasant at all. I love a lot of the Fenty products and oh my god, bitch, don't even get me started about Rihanna. We love her, but this isn't about her. This is about that shitty ass product and that is what it was. The lip stain, I also didn't care for that because you can get a Wet n Wild or a CoverGirl lip stain, which is the exact same product. For so much cheaper, if it were something revolutionary that actually did something great to my lips, then I would be okay with the price. And we only have two products in this category, which is kind of unfortunate because I do like to be sassy, but also yay because we have tried decent things. But our last product is the Makeup by Mario Foundation. I wanted to love this so much, but this product is like that ex who just couldn't get it up. They look great, but they do not perform well. The moment I spread it on my face, I was in love, but then by the end of the day, it was just creeping in my fine lines. It didn't wear that well, and only after a few hours. So to me, this product was maybe made more for like an influencer being on the camera for a couple hours or just made for people with different skin than what I have. But at the end of my wear time test, shit was just wiping off. It was like I'd been motorboating boobies at Mardi Gras all day. Not worth the price, especially when you can't get products that do last all day for much cheaper. So I'm sorry, but it was a no 
know for me. If you've tried it and enjoyed it, please let me know how you got it to work down below because it did look pretty at first. And there we go, babies. Keep it short, simple, and sweet. Oh, sounds like me. But thank you so much for being here. I love having you. And if you want a little bit more me in your life, head over to my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash poplux. You get videos a day early. You get Patreon-only content. You get a Patreon-only store. And best part, it is cheap, fun, and fancy, just like me. And don't forget my latest Repop collection is available at repopcosmetics.com. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at official lady, and you can follow me online at thepoplex.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye!